area, the main places that we have changed that you would maybe have some questions on uh, is menu category and menu modifiers. So we'll do our first stop with menu category. This screen has gotten so much easier to use. Uh, before, if I, for instance, didn't like the word appetizer as my category, or maybe the client didn't like it, they wanted it to say apps with a Z because they're that cool. So I can easily change that now in the software without having to create a new category, go back and reassign all my menu items to that new category, and then delete the old category name. I can just rename that category right from here and it will apply those settings throughout Microsoft. So if I didn't like the word appetizers, I can still change that. So um, if I choose appetizers and then change my category name to apps, I can hit change and it will change that throughout the whole system, the button layout, the menu items and pricing screen, and uh, your subcategory screen. So it'll be quicker, it's easier, you can assign pictures to your category buttons from here, you can change um, still the same features, you can make it mandatory, you can disable modifiers for it, um, etc. But the functionality is still basically the same. Your category prompts area is just a tool at the top here. Your category button list is also your priority listing. That used to be a separate column in version 8. Um, it's now just all in one column, and when you're done, if you make a change to the order in which these appear, you use the move up and down, and then you hit save button list down here, and each section has its own save. So if I change the meal period or something like that, there's also its own save down here. Now, menu modifiers, a little bit more different than the categories, I feel. I promise it's pretty straightforward and easy. So existing menu here, let's look at bread, for instance, all right? So I still select my modifier at the top left. That didn't change. That is still in the same area. But if you notice, what used to fall underneath it now falls to the right side of it. So I can still change my selection quantity. I can change the way this works. So you still have your select tasks for your pizzas and things like that. I can still modify that modifier with another modifier. I can change the default selection, et cetera. These checkboxes that used to appear towards the middle area of the screen are now right underneath the ones we brought to the right. All of the same functionality is still there. We just changed the layout, but added a couple new features. So what's new, you ask? Well, let me tell you, so in the modifier name area, it still looks the same. I can still set a color for my modifier. But what you'll notice is if I select the drop down for it, I can choose from ones I've already created. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. As well as this, it helps extremely when it comes to our food cost program because instead of having maybe mayo and mayonnaise as modifiers, we can just keep it consistent now. We use the same name throughout. We don't have to um, have all different kinds of namings. Maybe we have slice of cheese and then slice cheese and, and different things like that because it was harder in eight to see the consistency between modifiers. So right here from this drop down, if I know I need to add, um, let's see, what's a good one for my friend here? Um, maybe, yeah, butter. <laughs> butter. <laughs> right? Maybe we have frozen buns. I don't know. So I could easily see from this list, like, oh, well, I don't need to go ahead and, and remake a whole one, I can just select it. I can still modify and customize this to whatever. So um, if I charge for sliced cheese on burgers, but I don't charge for sliced cheese on our breakfast sandwiches, I can still reuse the name throughout the system without pulling in the customized feature of it, a price or something like that with it. So if you notice if I choose frozen, it didn't load anything to the right here. Um, you just have your defaults, your quantity and your tax is still just a default, but uh, nothing else from a previous modifier was loaded with it. It's simply just reusing the name to save you time and keep consistency for food cost reporting and any other kind of menu item report that you're going to run in the system. So um, all I would do then here, also another feature, if I had add update, it's going to add it here, but if I wanted to recall it, so maybe our rye bread, 
we want to charge 50 cents. Well, when you used to do it, it would pull it out of the list. And you would have to put it back in and then rearrange your list all over again. But if you notice, Rye is still hanging out in our modifier list here. But I can edit it. So I type in 50 cents, hit add update, and I don't have to put Rye back into the place right after we. It didn't end up at the bottom like it did in 8. It stayed right in the same place. As well as the price, you used to have to scroll and then select the item. But here you can quickly and easily see and read right across that rye is 50 cents. One other thing that I want to note that's not different from version 8, but just while we're on this screen, this setting that says included in menu item, this was designed so that, let's say you have a particular sandwich that comes with three certain main ingredients. Um, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. So you could put those items as include with and they would show up green on the modifier list as a flag for the cashier to ring it up knowing which items are included. So if someone says, does this come with tomato normally? Even if they fell asleep during their training class, um, they can see on the screen which items are included with. And you can easily touch that item to take it off or touch other items to add. This is a special use of the prefix functions in microsale and it does not work with other prefix functions like pizzas where you're trying to do right side, left side, or half. So please keep in mind if we're going to use this items included with this function for modifiers, um, it does take over other prefixes and, and doesn't play well, um, not good friends with other types of prefixes. So. Um, we're happy to help you find other ways to program what you're trying to program, but we want to uh, bring that up because it's, that question has come up a lot frequently. Um, and so I just want to make sure people understand that. All right. So that is all I'm going to go over for menu changes. If you do have more questions on it or 